Gamers, we are back with another one. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the new Chinese variation is here. Zushi, Shushi, Sushi. I don't know. Here we go. So the details are out. I've covered Byzantines a couple of days ago. It's on my YouTube channel in another video if you haven't looked, if you haven't seen it. Here we go. Jushi's Legacy is a variant of AoE forced Chinese civilization available with the Sultan's expansion. Uh, the teachings of philosopher reshaped the Chinese civilization with Legacy. The Chinese boast a sophisticated administration with superior, with superior imperial officials and advanced technologies. The brimming treasury helps to establish powerful dynasties and research a breadth of unique technologies. Recruit palace guards, Zuganus and Grenadiers early on to protect the Empire. Jushi's legacy is a technological powerhouse. The early bonuses in Tang and Song dynasties helped the civilization advance faster and built over a bountiful economic foundation. With a strong industrial framework, they can field vast amounts of dynasty units early in the game. Listen to everything I'm saying, because I can't say anything bonus, so just listen, alright? Can we also change the title uh, to uh, be the first thing Jushi's Legacy or um, Legacy Civ revealed or something? Thank you. Um, can amass great armies of unique units with ease? We're going to open this in a new tab right here. There are many options for improving the, uh, the Jushi's legacy imperial officials with unique upgrades. Improving the imperial officials with unique upgrades, such as faster movement, higher build limits, and improving the supervisability. With imperial officials catapulting Jushi's legacy into the mid game, the Yuan dynasty synergizes with a strong economy by helping produce more military units. Yuan dynasty helps economy by uh, helping produce more military units. In the Imperial Age, Jushi's Legacy offers strategic choices for units uh, for unit upgrades available via landmarks. The Ming Dynasty improves unique units, making the Jushi's Legacy a force to be reckoned with in the late game. So, as you can see, the dynasties work differently, aka they give you different stuff. So Song Dynasty is not Song Dynasty, basically. Here we go. Early Palace Guard. The Palace Guard is available in Feudal Age for Jushi's Legacy instead of the Castle Age. This fast infantry unit creates opportunities for early skirmishes. So yes, Palace Guards are available in the Feudal Age. So, like other civs have men at arms, they have palace guards. <clears throat> Imperial Guard and Yuan Raider. The Imperial Guard, which are these bad boys right here. I'm going to open all these pictures. The Imperial Guard and Yuan Raider become available once dynastic, once dynastic protectors is researched at Jushi's library landmark. These powerful cavalry units complement the infantry forces of Jushi's legacy by providing unique characteristics in battle. So these two units, the Imperial Guards and Yuan Raider, become available once the Nazi Protectors is researched at the landmark. So as you can see, they have two unique units. Um, and as you can also see, someone in the chat is asking new landmark. It's called Jushi's Library Landmark. So that, that answers your question. This probably account for units complement the infantry forces by providing unique characteristics in battle. Very cool. Let's look at the screenshots from now on. So this is what um, the civilization looks like. Um, as you can see, some of the buildings are looking the same. Some of the buildings are new buildings and they do not look the same. And if you look carefully, you will find a couple of new things um, that are on the screenshot. 
Um, there's a uh, thing right here that's looking different. There's a thing right here that's looking different. There's a thing right here that's looking different. Um, there's the one of the uh, uh, one of the unique new units. And um, yeah, for those that are watching, this is not a monastery. Monastery is right there. <clears throat> As you can see it right here. So that's pretty cool. These are the, the feudal palace guards. This is what they look like, kind of like Pepegas. And these are the, um, the two new unique cavalry units. So let's keep going. Age 1. From Age 1, the Tank Dynasty enables the Jushi's legacy to build cheaper landmarks. They also start the game with an Imperial official for fast access to both taxes and the supervised ability. So, yeah, Tank Dynasty equals cheaper landmarks. <clears throat> Age 2. Age 2. Jushi's legacy can build the Meditation Gardens, an economic landmark that generates resources based on what is nearby. Did you hear that? They can build the Meditation Gardens, economic landmark that generates resources based on what is nearby. So, if you put it on wood, or near wood, you get wood. If you put it near berries, you get berries. If you put it near some other resources, you might get some other resources. Um, but enemy units disrupt the peace and reduce its income. So, enemy units uh, being nearby reduce the income of the landmark and yes this landmark is uh going to be um obviously spawn dependent um look at it like a chapel you know you, you're gonna have to figure out where you want to place them right Constructing both landmarks will unlock a powerful Song Dynasty, which makes all economic buildings cheaper. So Song Dynasty does not reduce the villager production time. What it does is it makes all economic buildings cheaper. Now, let's talk about it. What are economic buildings? Economic buildings are... Farms, mills, lumber camps, mining camps, town centers. Um, I think docks also counter, count as economic buildings and granaries. Next, age three. In age three, uh, Jushi's legacy can construct the Mount Lu Academy landmark, which adds food to tax income. It adds food to tax income and includes powerful technologies that improve the imperial officials. So this landmark literally is, is an H3 eco landmark, which we actually don't have a lot of um, in the game, if you think about it. It adds food to the tax income and the upgrades that improve the imperial officials. And let me tell you, I can't tell you what the upgrades are, but the upgrades are not like, oh, you get 10 more gold. The upgrades are like, they're good. Like, they're good. So, yeah. The second one is the Shaolin Monastery. It opens up the production of Shaolin Monk, a powerful martial arts master capable of enduring even the fiercest of attacks. This is the third unique unit that Jushi's legacy will have, uh, which is the Shaolin Monk. Um, I know what this monk does, but obviously I can't tell you. Age 4. In Age 4, Jushi's legacy has access 
to Jushi's library, a landmark which houses many powerful unique technologies. They are very unique technologies. However, this is the cool part. However, only a few can be chosen to research. Which means, let's say there are, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you the exact number, but let's say there's 10 upgrades in that landmark, you can only get two, three, four, right? You cannot get all 10, like Vizier points, right? And these upgrades will heavily affect what units you make and your playstyle. And um, remember, these are upgrades, so you're, they're not like toggled on. So once you research it, it's researched. The Temple of the Sun landmark has four powerful toggle, which globally improve specific units. Um, I mean, I, I, get, I can't tell you what this is, but just like the researches affect certain units and will affect certain playstyles, uh, the Temple of the Sun landmark has four toggles. Like, uh, think of it like a Mechter aura, aura, right? You know how Mechter Aura has three different auras? This has four different toggles and you can only activate one. But it affects all the units on the map. So you don't need to be near the landmark, it's global. And obviously that's what the landmark does. So the stuff that it does have is pretty, pretty powerful. And you can, you know, toggle on and off. Like if you're, you know, making an X unit and you have that toggled on, that helps that X unit, you can transition to Y unit and then you can toggle on something else and yada yada. So that's pretty uh, pretty important to, to know. So going back to, so now you've seen the landmarks, obviously, as you saw now, um, all these landmarks are new. Uh, Jushi's Legacy does not have Barbican. It does not have <clears throat> Cockwork Tower, Great Wall Gatehouse, that does not exist at all. And when I played this Civ, it felt so weird, by the way. Um, like, it felt so weird that I'm playing like a Chinese Civ variation and I don't have a Barbican. Like, it just, because every time I was playing and I was getting attacked or whatever, I, I'm always like, oh, I, oh, right, I don't have a barbican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, wait, I just realized something. It doesn't say what the second landmark is in feudal. Do you guys see that? Leak? How's that a leak? Literally, there's no second landmark. Um,. I mean, d d did you really think that they're gonna keep Barbican and they're gonna put all the other uh, uh, landmarks that are new? So that's interesting. I know what the second landmark does, but I wonder if they're gonna... I don't know, I don't know why it's not here. It's surprising. Maybe they are gonna make Barbican actually, who knows. So the landmarks are different. They have three or maybe more actually unique units. I think it's three. The two knights or the two cavalry and the monk. So three. And this, the dynasties are obviously different. So the first dynasty, Tang Dynasty, gives you cheaper... Uh, where is it? The Tang Dynasty enables uh, the Jushi's Legacy to build cheaper landmarks. And they also start the game with Imperial Officials. So that's another thing. Um, they start with an Imperial Official. Unlike China, who has to make one. Now, the where are the other uh, bah, 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 bah. Song Dynasty, I think Song Dynasty. I mean, we we saw it. It's cheaper, um, cheaper economic buildings. The Yuan Dynasty synergizes with a strong economy by helping produce more military units, and then in Imperial Age, um, this is Legacy. Uh, offers for you for you landmark. The Ming Dynasty improves unique units. So as you guys can see, uh, this Civ is, or variation, whatever you want to call it. I know people are going to mold. Um, 
I call them sieves, I'm sorry. It is what it is. But this sieve is very focused on unique units. Um, there are the monks right here. There's the landmark. We do see... Oh, this is the, uh, the OG screenshot, so now you can see the three landmarks. The palace guards and... Um, the sieve focuses very much on the unique units and there is more to it but it's not shown here uh and actually some of the stuff you guys asked me like about byzantine that i didn't talk about was not supposed to be talked about um so there was a couple of people that were like yo this person said that byzantines have this and i was like that that was not announced anywhere and uh, apparently those people were not supposed to talk about those things so I can't mention anything other than that except what you see on the screen but yeah overall uh, this sim like I said I, I thought when I initially played it I thought it would play very much uh, like China like oh I know exactly what unit comp I'm gonna go um, or like, oh, I'm just gonna spam palace guards in feudal or something like that, right? But it's strong in some. It's stronger than China in some ways, like different, stronger in some ways. But in some ways, it's a lot weaker. So again, even though it's a variation of Chinese, um, there are very clear differences. And my the main one is the lack of Barbican, by the way. Um, the lack of Barbican is something that's like it just changes completely the way you open because you don't have that protection or like um, another thing to consider you know you have your uh, Imperial Academy with China where you can produce Imperial officials they don't have Imperial Academy right so there's a lot of stuff like that that when I first entered, and I'm sure most people will not even consider. Um, but then once you start playing, you'll see like, oh, I'm missing all these things or like faster villager production. So it's going to take a little bit, I think, for people to wire their brain the proper way. Right. Because when I was also playing, um, I was like, I went to TC and I went Song Dynasty. And I was like, why is my economy, like, it's not where it's supposed to be, right? And then I was like, oh shit, my villagers are not producing faster, you know? So there's going to be a lot of those moments, but I can guarantee you one thing. Um, it will not feel like playing China. But if you did play China, you're going to have easier time getting into Zhu, uh, Jushi's legacy civilization because of it. And another obvious one, um, they don't have clockwork um, landmark, so your siege does not have extra HP. So, you know, when you're fighting Jushi's legacy, it's not like, oh, their sprinkles are busted or, you know, their sieges has more health. That doesn't exist, right? Um, then you have, obviously, the other landmark, which is what Imperial, the one that gives vision, Imperial something that doesn't exist but that's not like the biggest deal because that's not a super good uh i would say landmark in the first place imperial palace yeah and then in uh imperial age you don't have the stonewall gatehouse so obviously not only you don't have barbican but you don't have stonewall gatehouse uh your economy takes a little bit more to boom but then you unlock a lot of the unique stuff that not only that changes your gameplay, but you unlock a lot of the unique upgrades and stuff that changes your gameplay or changes your units or whatever uh, quite a bit more. And the last landmark that you're missing, do you know which one that is? There is... Um, and needless to say, by the way, uh, Yuan and Ming Dynasty don't have the bonus speed and bonus HP. Um, but Spirit Way is not in, so when your unique unit die uh, in the game, they don't actually receive the, the health, because that's what Spirit Way gives you. So yeah, it's, uh, 
I can't, guys, again, I can tell you what's on the screen. I cannot tell you what's off the screen. All right. So you guys asking me questions, um, I, I can't answer them unless like you can ask me, do they have a spearman? And I can say yes, because you can see a spearman right there. Or um, do they have, you know, villagers? Yes, they have, they're right there, right? But it's like, do they have stuff that's not shown in the screenshot? I don't know. Have they shown the wonder? Yeah. Is the Civ a more aggressive China? I honestly don't, see, I, I don't know. I played it, but it's like weird it's gonna take a bit for people to figure out because i don't know how you play it because the way i try to play it is 2tc right because that's how you play china and it's like oh in my mind this is you know that that's how you play it and that's how you're supposed to play it but it doesn't feel like that's the way to go so i don't know i generally don't know i think it's one of those where it's like Let's assume the civil. Let's assume the game has two civs only. It has like the English one TC all in, and it has Abbasid where you gotta go two TC, right? Those are two obviously different civs. So Jushi's Legacy is like, if you added a third civ, and it's like, well, where do you put him? Do you put him on the more aggressive, or do you put him on the boom side? And I, I actually don't know. I don't know. Uh, like, for example, if China played against uh, Jushi's Legacy, China would outboom them for sure. Right? But then Jushi's Legacy will have advantages at other places. So it's hard to say. And, uh,. There's always downside to things. So when a sieve has a lot more than their original sieve doesn't have, there are downsides to it. Is that granular at the top? Yeah, that is granular right there. So the fact that they have, um, where is it? Um, they can field, uh, Vast amounts of dynasty units early in the game, combined with the palace guards being available in the feudal age, um, yada yada. So, this thing is not a bonus. Like, this is not like a, you build something and you have access. They just have access to dynasty units. So, there is downside to it. How fun were they in your early impressions? Um... I, I played a few games with them, but I didn't get to play with everything there is. Because remember, uh, one of the landmarks... Like, first of all, the landmarks are completely like different, right? But one of the landmarks that you upgrade your unique stuff... Um, and then you can't select another tech. I didn't get to experience all the techs, right? So I didn't play with everything yet, basically. So yeah, that's it. That's the Civ that was revealed today. And there are two more civilizations to be revealed, which is Order of the Dragon and the Japanese. The Japanese people are probably the most excited for. Order of the Dragon, I'm going to be honest, I played Order of the Dragon the most. Uh, if I played, let's say, 30 games, probably 10, 12 games were with Order of the Dragon. So... I played that quite a bit, uh, and uh, whatever you're expecting with Order of the Dragon, you're wrong. So, like, whatever your opinion is on what they might be, you're not going to guess it. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's it. But we have, how many weeks are till the release? We have four more weeks, right? Um, so, obviously, I'm going to cover the Order of the Dragon and the Japanese when they're coming out. And eventually, you know, before they... Uh, what's it called? Uh, before they release, I'm assuming they're going to release, like, full patch notes and stuff like that. Um, or I'm assuming they're going to do balance changes, by the way. Which they always do at, uh, 
you know, even with Malin and Ottoman, they did balance changes for the old sieves. So I'm gonna cover the two new sieves, and we're gonna cover the patch notes. I'm gonna cover everything. And then on November 14th, brothers, we're doing a subathon. If you're watching this on YouTube, I wanna thank you so much for watching, you son of a gun. I appreciate you. Thank you. Check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now playing Jushi's Legacy. How's my pronunciation, by the way? I rate it. Jushi's Legacy. 1 to 10. Um, but yeah, and if you're on YouTube, make sure to tune in to the Subathon, where I'm going to be streaming 24-7. And uh, yeah, if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going, brothers.